A haggis is a little Scottish animal that lives on the top of the mountains, almost like a, a little person. And you know what the strange thing is about a haggis? Do you know what they have? Different to everybody else? Well, as they walk around and round and round the mountain, they have one leg shorter than the other. And that's a haggis. <laughs> Welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. It is Burns Night next week. The 25th of January is always on the 25th of January and it is the day to celebrate the life of the wonderful poet Robert Burns. Robert Burns was born over 200 years ago. In fact, this year would be his 263rd birthday. He is um, probably most famous for Old Lang Syne, which is is just wonderful. Now you don't have to be Scottish to celebrate Burns Night. It's, um, I think, a wonderful excuse to eat Scottish food and um, remember a wonderful man and his wonderful poetry. So I have got in front of me haggis, neeps, which is swede, and tatties, potatoes. I also have two very noisy people behind me, Penny and Florence. I decided to wake up and join in the fun. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get cooking and I'm going to talk you through um, what I am creating for our celebrations. So the first thing I'm going to show you what to do with your haggis and how to prepare it. So many people are put off by haggis. I think there's lots of myths around it and I know that our children were teased endlessly on a uh, Scottish holidays about haggis running around in the woods and all sorts of things like that, um, that, that they have this sort of myth behind it. Anyway, I'm just going to cut off this outer packaging. You can get haggis, um, I actually got this in our local Waitrose, um, butchers, um, you know, all sorts of places online. Um, so let's take that plastic off. You can microwave it. Obviously, if you do microwave it, you need to take off the metal clasps that are on there. So, I have got an oven tray here, prepared with a couple of centimetres of water. And the water is just going to stop it from drying out in the oven. We just don't want it to be really kind of dry and horrid. I think that can be a bit off-putting. I'm going to wrap it in tin foil. In fact, I've forgotten one of the most important things is to prick it. You can use a fork or a sharp knife and just prick it all over um, and that just lets the steam out. I'm going to use a few layers, three in total, of tin foil. I want it to be wrapped up really, really well. My haggis is all neatly wrapped up in a parcel. I'm going to put it in the tray that I have prepared here with a little bit of water in it. This size haggis will feed six to seven people uh, pr approximately, and I'm going to cook it for two and a half hours. I'm not putting it into a really hot oven, about 160 uh, degrees Celsius. So I'm not gonna use the roasting oven of my alga. I'm actually going to use the baking oven for two and a half hours. So in that goes now. My haggis is in the alga and I'm just going to prepare my potatoes. Now I have washed these. I'm not gonna peel them. I'm just going to chop them up into small-ish chunks. I've got a saucepan of cold water here. It's really important that you cook root vegetables, any vegetable that grows underground, in cold water and bring it to the boil. Um, 
from cold. Anything that goes above ground, you can put into hot water. So we have potatoes all chopped in there. A good pinch of sea salt. I'm just going to let them cook for about five minutes just to soften through and then I'm actually going to put them into uh, a roasting tin and roast them. I'm going for kind of rough and ready um, neats and tatties. I don't want it to be smooth and perfect. Um, it's a personal preference which is why I haven't peeled the potatoes but I am going to peel the sweet. Now I'm going to serve mine with um, buttered leeks. But if I wasn't, I would do a um, cock -a leeky soup. And that is basically leeks, celery, chicken broth um, as a starter. And I just actually think that we're gonna have enough food not to have a starter as well. But if you wanted to do a starter, um, a traditional Scottish starter would be the cock -a leeky soup. Sweet is particularly hard root vegetable. So I'm just going to roughly chop this into chunks. It doesn't need to be perfect at all because it will be mashed a bit. And I've got a pan here with some cold water. So I'm actually going to um, cook these in the agar. You could boil them. If you don't have an agar, you can just boil them on top, like you know, any other veg you would do. But actually, they take quite a lot of cooking. It's gonna take about an hour. So I'm putting these inside, inside the oven, rather than on the top, because I don't want to let all of that heat out. So with all my swede chopped up, into the water it goes. And I'm going to put a good, scoop of sea salt in there. I'm going to bring them to the boil on the top of my aga and then once they're boiling I will put them into the simmering oven and just leave them there until they're nice and soft and I can mash them. I have to be careful because Florence has gone to sleep just in front of the aga. I forgot to put in thyme. So that's just some fresh thyme into my Swedes. <laughs> There's a bit on there. Kind on there. I've made a mess. I'm trying to do it one-handed. And my potatoes are just coming up to the boil there. Everything's boiling. So these Swedes are going to go into my simmering oven. If you aren't using an auger, then just reduce the temperature and let them simmer away until they're really nice and soft. It will take a while because they're a hard root vegetable. It will probably take um, 45 minutes to an hour. My potatoes are done too, so I'm just going to strain off the water. I'm <laughs> getting a face full of steam. Once you've strained off the water and you don't want to overcook them, you just want them to be beginning to, you know, soften and about five minutes from boiling. Pop them into a roasting tray. You want them just to dry out a little bit. So just leave them for a few minutes just for that steam to come off and let them dry, dry slightly so they're not uh, damp from the water. And when you strain them, make sure you strain them properly. I've got some olive oil here, which I'm just going to drizzle over. About a um, tablespoon and a half. And then I have got some rock salt, which actually is from Scotland, from Gordon's Castle. We were lucky enough to go up there last year. And this is rock salt with thyme and pink peppercorn. I'm just using this because I've got it and it's quite fun to use. Um, but you could just put some herbs in, um, you know, some thyme and some salt and some pepper. And then just give them a little bit of a shake and then I'm going to put them in my roasting oven of my agar until they are nice and 
just go golden brown slightly. Now for pud, I do love a good pud. And this is a traditional Cranachan trifle, which I'm gonna show you how to make. This is slightly my take on it. I like to adapt things. I'm just going to start with um, three tablespoons. Well, I can't get a tablespoon into this jar. This is Exmoor honey that we got when we were down in Devon. And I love using proper, proper honey in my cooking rather than the cheap runny stuff, which you absolutely can use. But this is just, um, I'm going to be using most of the jar. It smells amazing. It's, you just can't beat honey. I actually am desperate to keep bees, but uh, it's like I keep saying no. I have enough on my plate. Uh, not he has enough on his plate. I have enough on my plate and I shouldn't be taking on more things. But I would love to keep uh, bees one day. So I've got my honey in there and I am going to add some butter, which is over here. Um, I'm just using salted because I've got it out, but uh, I normally use unsalted for baking. I've got my scales. I love these scales. They're the Usha ones and I just find them so easy to use. And I love the fact that you can change the units. So uh, 100 grams of butter in there. You can do this part in advance and um, you'll see what I mean as we progress with the recipe, but you can do it in advance and so you don't have to do it on the day. A little bit more butter. There we are. That will do it. And I'm just going to um, gently melt those together on the argo. And then weigh out everything else. So I've got some hazelnuts here and they can be roughly chopped. I've got this great bit of kit which is from Oxo and I find it super super helpful for um, things like this and it is 80 grams of hazelnuts. When you chop nuts yourself they tend to ping all over the place whereas in here I just need a little bit of, uh, not elbow grease, but <laughs> arm power to chop them. But it saves you having nuts pinging all over the shop. That's easier. That's why I do my workouts. <laughs> Keeps me strong for things like this. Yeah, that will do nicely. I'm just going to weigh out all of the rest of the ingredients. I've just got some oats here. So 150 grams of oats, 80 grams of caster sugar, 60 grams of plain flour, and then the nuts. So there is my honey and butter, which has melted nicely. And I'm just going to tip in all the rest of the ingredients and stir it. The heat from the honey and butter should melt that sugar quite nicely. You might need to put it back on the heat a little bit. You just want to mix it all in so the oats have absorbed all of the honey and butter and everything else. And you want it to be that sort of consistency, sort of like that. So I've got some baking paper. your baking paper up when you're using it for something like this anyway and it's just much easier to work with to line my tray and then just tip all of this onto the baking paper and then I'm just going to squash Move that. Squash this down. Sort of as flat as you can, really spread it out as much as possible. 
you don't want it to be in one heaped lump in the middle. It doesn't need to be perfect at all. It doesn't matter if there are gaps in it. You want it looking sort of like that. And then I'm going to put it into my baking oven for 20 minutes and um, just let that cook through so it's sort of golden and crunchy is what we're going for. So I've come home to check that I'm cooking the haggis all right, <laughs> haven't you? Yeah, now I'm a big... Oh, be careful of that. Oh, I, I just actually want to show you that. Those are the oats for our pudding that are golden and looking beautiful. So I'm just going to leave them to cool to one side and we're going to chat haggis for a moment, aren't we? Big fan of haggis. Um, actually, and uh, Charlie doesn't know this, but quite often I will sneak a little haggis into the office and have it for lunch because it is it's really simple to do. You can do it either in a microwave or steam it in a um, in a in a saucepan, um, and it's absolutely delicious. And one of the things I love it with, with it is mango chutney, um, but that's just a personal preference. But um, if you like mango chutney, try it with your haggis. What else do you eat it with in the office? Just by itself with the Just mango chunks. Now let's talk about um, actually a vegetarian option. So you can just use oats, mushrooms, celery, carrots, things like that. Just um, steam them for a little bit, pack them into a roasting tin. Meatloaf. Like meatless meatloaf. Pack them into a baking tin and then you can just bake that in the oven and then you can have um, a vegetarian or vegan equivalent of, of haggis. Yeah. Yeah. And um, celebrating Burns Night. Are you going to put your kilt on? I do have a kilt. Um, it goes back a long way. Um, so I think I might struggle to fit into it. I think you might struggle. Um, in when fact, did you I, think if I, I think if I wandered around Pulborough High Street with it, I'd probably be arrested. <laughs> I think you probably would be um, arrested. Somewhere so I've got Mum's kilt, but I think it's down in Devon in a suitcase of her old clothes. Um, I, Simon was at school in Scotland and I spent most of my childhood up there so we have um, we have a, a love for Scotland don't we yeah. yeah anyway thank you darling for sharing that. Well, um, you happy popped, Burns night yes you popped home for lunch didn't you well I was hoping the haggis might be ready but there we go that's <laughs> so why you came back no, it's still got another hour to cook <laughs> <laughs> you got that for supper darling good look forward to it and I hear a pudding too Yes, a pudding as well, mm -hmm. uh, which I am just working on right here. So I has now gone back to the office for the afternoon. <laughs> but those are my sort of oaty nutty things, and I'm just going to let them cool completely there while I make the whiskey sauce. So I've got a shallot, which I'm just going to chop up. I like um, these banana shallots. And I use them quite a lot rather than onion. I just find they have a sweeter flavour. And if you store them in a cool place, they um, they last. Boy, those were savage. Literally, um, <laughs> tears running down my face. Right, into a pan. Good knob of butter in there. And I'm gonna put it onto a high heat. The dogs are playing just through there. Havoc. Havoc in the house. And there's not a child in sight, which is bonkers. Right, I have got some cream. I've got some whiskey and um, some salt, some pepper. I need to go and get some Dijon mustard. Let's give that a stir. Right, our shallots are browning nicely. I have got some drambuie, but you can use whatever whiskey you have to hand. And I'm just going to put two tablespoons in here. Over a high heat and then the alcohol will burn off. Now, if you want to add more whiskey, you absolutely can. I don't particularly like it too strong and nor does I. So I'm just adding two tablespoons, but you could add three or four if you preferred its personal preference. I'm going to put a teaspoon of Dijon mustard in at this stage and just mix that in. Oh, the smells are amazing. 
and I've just got some stock, some vegetable stock in my mug here. I'm going to add that in to I'm going to add some seasoning now, a pinch of sea salt, some black pepper, and I'm just going to reduce the temperature to add in my cream. You don't want to add in cream when the temperature is really high, so I'm just going to let that cool for a moment. The recipe will be on my website with all the measurements. I do everything by eye, but I will have all the measurements there for you. I'll just slowly stir that cream in. Really important to have a little taste of your sauces and check the seasoning. So I'm going to have a little. Mm, that is really good. That is really good. It's not too strong with whiskey. If you want it stronger, do add more. I just put two tablespoons, but you can add three or four. And that is done. So super easy and delicious accompaniment to our haggis, neeps and tatties. My Swede has just come out of the slow oven of the Arga. Now, when you can get your knife in easily and it's soft enough, you know it's done. So I'm just going to strain off the water. And in fact, I'm going to keep some of the water, pop it in a bowl. I love um, keeping vegetable water. It's really useful for stock and um, all sorts of things. I'm just in the middle of teaching my Arga course. And I always say never to put a saucepan with a proper handle into the Arga. I always use um, these Le Creuset pots to go into the oven and then I know that they are going to be hot and I'm not going to burn myself. So that is a top tip for you. Now you can do your, um, your sweet, your neeps, your potatoes in advance and just reheat them. It doesn't matter um, at all. I'm going to put some butter in here. So just mash them. just like you would potatoes and don't forget to add some seasoning I'm going to use some of that salt with thyme and it's got the peppercorns so I just will add a little bit of that now you can mash your potatoes and your swede together absolutely you can or you can do them as separate I'm going to do them as separate because I know that my children are going to turn their nose up at mash sweet. I know that they will. I will get them to try it because you've got to try things, but I'll know, I know that they'll eat the potatoes. <laughs> no bother. And here are my potatoes, which I'm just going to smash up a bit. can absolutely do just normal mashed potato. You can do your mash and mix it together with your sweet, really, however uh, takes your fancy, whatever your preference is. And the great thing about this is it's something that you can do in advance as well. Time for put. So these have cooled nicely and I want to just break it up into pieces. Quite handy to have a child to come and help do this, but they're at school. <laughs> Those are all broken up and ready. So I'm going to put in half a pint of double cream whisk this to get going. I could use my Kenwood, but actually I thought rather than getting it out, I'd show you how to do it with an electric whisk. You want to be careful not to over whisk the cream. It needs a little bit more than that, but I wanted just to stop it at this stage and show you. So I just want soft peaks. I'm going to give it another quick blitz 
Penny and Florence, I'm not sure about the whisk, or particularly Florence, she's never heard it before. <laughs> and that is the sort of consistency that you want for your double cream. Now, I've got to be careful that that doesn't fall over, I end up with sugar everywhere. I've got some icing sugar and I'm just going to put a tablespoon of icing sugar in to there. And then I have got some mascarpone and some Greek yogurt. We're going for a bit of everything today. I'm going to put um, basically two tablespoons of mascarpone in. And then I find it's a little bit too heavy if you just use mascarpone, so I'm using some Greek yogurt as well which I think just makes it a little bit lighter. And personally, I don't like a really heavy, creamy pudding. And I'm going to put two good size tablespoons. I'm using a dessert spoon, so that's why I'm going for big spoons. Just scoop that in. And Dram Yui. Put a little bit of whiskey in there, and I'm going for uh, just under a tablespoon. But you can definitely add more if you would like. Put that on there, and then slowly whisk that all together. Voila! We are done. It smells good looking perfect tap off the excess oh try not to splatter it around i have got some frozen raspberries here now you can use whatever berries you like um it's traditional to go with raspberries because uh wonderful wonderful raspberries are grown in scotland but um I've, I've got blackberries in the freezer, I could use those, but I thought we would, we'd go traditional today. So I have got some glasses that I'm gonna to use to serve into. So put a dollop into, in fact, I can hear Penny upstairs. She's gone, uh, I think, for a snooze on our bed, thinking that I'm going to be making a lot of noise. She doesn't like the vacuum cleaner either. She runs upstairs when I get that out. Uh, Florence thinks it's a game. She's not scared of it. So just try and get them even, if possible. And just squidge your cream down a bit into the bottom of your glasses. Now you can make one big bowl, absolutely you can, or you can do individual, it's personal preference. And then just put a few of your raspberries, it doesn't matter whether they're frozen or have defrosted, mine is still a bit frozen. Um, as you can see, that's stuck together. I'm gonna to put three raspberries in each, but it, it really doesn't matter and it depends on the size of your glasses and things like that. Um, now this is a complete optional extra, but I'm going with a little bit of demerara because it sort of dissolves and it just looks gorgeous once you've put them in the fridge because it's it's probably better to make this in advance. And just a little sprinkle of demerara on the top and then your scrunched up oaty nutty bits put a sprinkle of those on two and we're basically making a trifle i love a bit of trifle the pen's come back down penny i've stopped the noise you'll be pleased <laughs> you'll be pleased to know um a couple more bits there and then just continue the process, just dollop it on. 
and squidge it out and then put another layer. timer has just pinged to say that the haggis is had its time so I've just taken that out of the agar and I thought that I would finish off this by piping some uh, bits of the cream on top so I've got a piping bag with a nozzle the easiest way to fill a piping bag is to hold it um, I'm right-handed, so I'm doing it this way around. Hold it in your left hand, like so, and just pull the piping bag over your hand. Hold the nozzle and just fill your piping bag, pushing the cream or meringue or whatever it is that you are piping in to the bag like so and just push it in push it down and there we are piping bag is full it's going to put a little sprinkle of demerara over the top and you can make these a couple of days in advance um they will keep in the fridge for for a couple of days so then just turn the bag over your hand like that gather it up hold it tightly very tightly you don't want stuff squidging out of the top and then twist 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 squeeze until you can see that it's just coming out of your nozzle and i'm just going to pipe a few little um, little blobs. I'm not sure what the what the technical term is, but like so, on the top of each of my pud. And there's enough cream in there to do. I've just done five because it's the five of us. But there's enough cream in there to do um, to do six. And then I'm just going to pop a raspberry on the top of each one and then put those in the fridge until you are ready to eat. I have sliced up my leeks and I'm just going to do them in some butter, olive oil, salt and pepper, really simple a couple of knobs of butter. The Scots aren't known for their healthy, healthy cooking. <laughs> I'll just heat that up, add in the leeks. I am not tread on a dog that's beneath me. Some pepper, some sea salt, splash of olive oil. And I'm just going to leave those to cook through for a few moments. That is still quite warm. So I'm going to leave it just for a little bit longer until I can easily unwrap it. Leeks are done into a serving bowl. Everything is done. Everything is ready unwrap this and then you literally just slice it open like that to serve and spoon out so here we are with our burns night supper ready to sit down and enjoy so my tatties some buttered leek my neeps and last but not least my haggis and we mustn't forget the whiskey sauce There we are, and put.
is in the fridge, which is very important. I hope that you have enjoyed this week's video. I hope that you enjoy celebrating Burns Night. Whether you're Scottish or not, you can totally, totally get involved and why not give it a go? Try cooking some haggis. It is, as Sai, Sai says, utterly delicious. And um, yeah, enjoy. Thank you for watching. Please remember to hit subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Like, comment, share the video with somebody that you might think um, will enjoy it or enjoy my channel. And I will see you again next week. Sending lots of love and have a lovely weekend and week ahead. Thank you.